Hello my loves. Okie dokie, I've sculpted a clear base here and given it a nice pinch. So I've got a lovely C curve. Um, filed it a little bit, just shaped it. I've used the Kirsty Meekin nail forms. Wanted to see what they were like. They're really good. They're very thick. They form a really, really good firm base. They are incredibly long, but they actually break off at number eight. So you can have salon length or extreme length, which is great. And they're wonderful to work with. So I would recommend those. I'm going in with a bead of CJP Baby Blue. This works really, really well with the Diamond Nail Supplies Monomer. Um, so yes. CJP colours work awesomely with Diamond Nail Supplies Monomer, which is great. Because I like the colours, but I can't use the Monomer from CJP. So I, this is a good compromise. And I've got a clear base and I'm capping in clear, so it doesn't matter. Going down with the second bead, I'm going to place that bead on there, feather it back slightly. And then I use my brush to sort of pat it and walk it down the nail. So I'm just gonna do a whole nail in this lovely color. This is like a soft blue with a shimmer, really nice for springtime. Clean my brush off, get it back in the monomer and then work that bead down to the tip there. I'm not letting Milo in because he's been naughty. I've had to re-record this because he kept woofing the whole time. Like, because <laughs> there's traffic outside. So I'm just looking at this thinking, yeah, I'm gonna place another bead there, build up some apex. So I'll place the bead on, I'll tuck it in there and then feather it down. Tuck it in and then feather it down. I think I'd go back and cap a little bit in clear later on actually because I wasn't quite happy with the structure. I'm just feathering that bead in, see, just the, the very edge. You don't kind of splat it too far up, you very gently. And then working that bead down the nail again. He's scratched at the door to get in and I feel mean not letting him in, but he's noisy. Oh, maybe we'll try one more time and let him in because he's not going to go away. Okay, onto the index finger. So I'm going to place a bead of this baby blue at the tip and feather it back up the nail. Come on then, mister. Ready? Up we come. Oh, good boy. There we are. You come in, mummy. There. Be a good boy now, be quiet. It's a good boy. <laughs> so I'm just feathering it up. You don't need a lot of product, nice and thin. Nice and thin and relaxed, man. And then I think I place another bead down. Quite wet this time. And just work it gently in. Oh, he's doing a big yawn, you must be tired. It's hard. Hard life being a pampered pooch. So you're just feathering that back, it blends in nicely. The shimmer makes it these colours so easy to ombre as well. So this is going to be an ombre nail with a nail bed colour that I have made myself. Ooh! <laughs> My little dude. Another bead there of the baby blue, just patting it and blending it. Really, really wet just to create a little bit more colour and pigment going up towards the free edge of my natural nail. I 
and then I won't put the pink on yet I will leave it oh this is the pink I've made now I've used diamond nail supplies stripped and bare almost equal parts and then glitterati nails grey fairy chrome pigment and it's made the most beautiful sparkly pinky um, cover powder like so lush it's unbelievable now this is a marble nail in hindsight I feel can you see the sparkles I feel like it was a bit watery I maybe should have used a white in there to give it some definition rather than a clear so we do put do some Swarovski crystal art on this nail but I'm using a bead of clarity a bead of baby blue and a bead of my nail bed mix So yes, like I said, it's just it's just stripped from Diamond Nail Supplies, bare from Diamond Nail Supplies, and Glitterati Nails Grey, fairy chrome pigment, and it's amazing. I mean, it's just my going to be my go-to nail bed colour now because I love it so much. Again, a bead of clear, a bead of the pink, and a bead of the blue. I'm just kind of like swooshing them around but I do think they were a bit too pale to make a really good marble it's cute but it would have been better if there was white for sure but that's all a learning process isn't it and I've changed brushes by the way quickly changed to my round brush from glitter fairy because I find it easier to marble with that brush it's got more of a point oh sorry big yawn I'm just adding little bits here and there of a um, little bit of pink, little bit of blue, just little bits here and there. And then I'll let that set up before I go and cap it. So on this nail I've placed a big bead of this cover pink down and I'm just patting it, tucking it into the cuticle and then feathering it down the nail. Sorry my other fingernail keeps getting in the way. It's really hard to film your own nails. I'm going to use some of this gorgeous like angel wings material that Dawn sent me last year and I still use it now. Thank you Dawn. It's perfect for this. So I'm wrapping that around the nail and then I'm going to hold it into place. Oh you can see my spotty pyjamas. Yes, I was in my pyjamas. I don't care. <laughs> now this is a block of bugger to work with. You have to start adding little tiny wet beads of acrylic. You could do it with glue, I suppose. I always worry about doing it with glue that I'm going to stick myself to myself. So, because <laughs> that's the sort of thing I would do. So I've just popped a little clear bead on and then I'm going to, what, I, what I'm going to do is hold it like this for ages, but you don't see all of it because you would be just bored watching me like this. So there we go, look, as if by magic. And I start working on the pinky finger here and it's very, very, very difficult because the material's in the way. So then I break off to trim the material, but I'm doing another ombre nail here. So a bead at the very, very tip of the nail there and then feather it back through the body of the nail try not to get that material in it while I'm doing it. I should have cut it first, but I didn't because I'm stupid. I was so excited. I was just like, shiny star everywhere. Okay, so yes, I've gone in and trimmed this now because it is becoming annoying. And back on with the ombre nail. Little wet bead of the blue, feathering it through the nail. Bit more. And just keep building it up. It's nice and pigmented, so it's easy enough to do. Really like this colour actually. Very springtimey and pretty.
Okay, so I'm going in with my nail bed uh, cover that I've made. It's really lovely. I think they should release it. And call it Sarah. <laughs> Look at the sparkle. Can you see the sparkle? Oh my god. And because it's a chrome pigment, there's no bits. Like it's super fine. It's made of mica. Super, super fine. Can't tell you how much I've put in. I just kept adding it until it was sufficiently shimmery. But I was quite proud because it's the first time I've done something like that. I mixed an orange last year, which turned out a bit wonky. But this turned out beautifully. It's very proud. Cute little ombre. Okay, so I'm going to pat in now this absolutely gorgeous glitter from Glitterati. It's called Bubbles in White, but it's actually like a white iridescent so as you can see it's stunning and it actually does look like bubbles they're different size there's a couple of small hexagons there's some fine glitter and then there's some round dots and when I'm looking at it now it actually looks like floaty iridescent bubbles oh it's so nice I didn't even realize I had it I just it was in my my glitter box and I've got so much and I pulled it out and I was like oh perfect It actually seems to give off kind of like a greeny blue hue. Maybe that's why I thought it was so perfect. But I liked it so much, I started slapping it on everything. So I actually stuck it on um, over the angel material as well. So I'm just placing another bead of this clear, uh, oh my God, clear, this nail bed to do the ombre. Wake up, Sarah. So as you can see, I've worked quite wet with the first bead. I'm just blending it in there. And then I'll use my brush to tap those sidewalls. Want to keep them as neat as possible so we don't have to file too much. And then at the cuticle, we'll place the bead on, tuck it in, just using the very tip of the brush and then feather it down the nail. Easy peasy. When you've got a nice uh, cover color, it blends so easily. It just, it makes ombres effortless. And if you're new to ombres, I would recommend starting with shimmery colours first. They seem to be a bit easier. And then I'm going to pat in some more of these Glitterati bubbles. Oh my god, I love it. I love it so much. See the brown one there? Oh, they look so nice. When they're encapsulated, they just they look like floaty bubbles. They really do. I really like it. But again, like I said, I loved it so much, I decided to slap it on top of this one as well. So I just grabbed a little wet bead and some of the glitter and started playing with it and patting it around. And, and it really looks good. It really sets off um, the material inside. I'm just so happy with it. This entire set came out really nice. And I think that it was handy that I felt very confident in my base structure. So, sorry about the burn on my finger. I burnt myself on the oven. Right, so I've capped and filed these and cut my thumb. Um, not too thick, as you can see. Manageable for me. And I'm using Tack Free Top Shine from Diamond Nail Supplies. So we're gonna go on with some top coat here and then cure these for 60 seconds. Watch the glitter. Ah. <laughs> I feel like it should be angels singing. I feel like I should have been a magpie. This is the nail that, oh, I just felt like I should have done it differently, but it turned out beautifully because now it's covered in Swarovskis, so no issue there. But as you can see, the marble was too wishy-washy. I needed a contrasting color. So that's a lesson learnt.
beautiful nail. This might be my favourite nail. I'm not sure. I did, um, on the marble nail and the nail with the netting in, I did then do a top coat underneath as well because there are elements of clarity running through them. So, very important. And then I buffed. I buffed my thumb and I buffed the finger with the marble on. And I'm using my Alice tweezers from Navy. I use these for all Swarovski crystal work because they allow me to just place things so easily and pick up so easily. Now I didn't end up doing a design on the thumb. I thought I was going to. So I'm using these pointy back opals from Angel Crystals. All my crystals are from Angel Crystals. These are from the clear mix bag. You can get something like 400 of them for about 13 pounds, but I've got a discount as well. These are the kites and the droplet things. And this is air blue. I'll put the link to Angel Crystals in. I'm using Ugly Duckling Stick It. Um, yes, I've got a discount code for Angel Crystals. Please check them out because they're not as expensive as you think they are. Somebody said, what? You can get them a bag for like less than £15. I'm like, yeah, you can get 400 of the things. Check it out. Plus I've got a discount code. Please have a look. Some of the small bags are like less than a fiver for some of the shapes. You know what I mean? The nice shapes. So I'm laying down a bead of this shtick it. It is like thick, thick, thick builder gel. And then I'm going to pick up one of the opals, the pointy backs, rest it on its side and use the Alice tweezers to nudge it in. And this is why I like them because they're very intricate. You can work really, really neatly and intricately with them. Place the second one down and start fixing those two so they're going to look like they're almost leaning on each other so we're making a small cluster and then I'll set that in my lamp for 60 seconds and I'm going to go in with some more stick it on my gel brush because we're going to add a third opal to this see how easy it is with these tweezers seriously I'm in love with them they've made my crystal application so much easier and quicker so much quicker because I'm not chasing crystals with a bloody picker upper. -er. So I've stuck that back under the lamp and now we're going to go in between these little gaps because you want these to last and you don't want them to come get caught on anything. So I'm going in between these little gaps. I tried using my detailer brush and I was like nope, need more. So I went in back in with my gel brush and really hooked it in and around the base of the crystals and then went in with some of the flat backs and tucked them in. So this is an air blue, which is blue with a gold hue. Stunning. And then I've got some little uh, caviar beads from Beauty Big Bang. And I'm just tucking them in and around and it's about creating less surface that's got sharp, catchy edges. So you want to round off the surfaces as much as possible. So again, using the Stick It Gel and one of the clear flat back crystals. The clear, they are clear, but they, they shimmer. They're so, in fact, they're called clear shimmer. They're stunning. And then I've just basically popped a little bit of gel on the edge of my tweezer so I could pick up the beads and then I'll just wipe it off. So they're easier to work with. So I've set that. I've sped this bit up because it took ages. I've now got some Diamond Nail Supplies crystal resin and I'm going to start applying some of the flat back crystals in a little design. So these are the, I think they're called teardrop or raindrop, can't remember. These are crystal shimmer, clear shimmer ones, or clear. They're not very expensive. I think you can pick up a small bag of them for a few pounds. It's really not a lot, but you, you don't get a shimmer like it. It's insane. And then we're going to go in with a couple of the blue, air blue shimmers. I didn't plan this out because I wasn't going to do a crystal nail, which sounds just like terrible. But I just thought, oh, I might just use the marble and have a light marble nail, but it wasn't very nice. So, And then I'm using a kite shape, flat back. And then I go round once they've set and seal them all in with a bit of stick it on a detailer brush just so we don't have any edges or anything's going to lift or get caught apply it quite thin but tuck it in underneath 
because you're going to top coat again anyway. And that's the finished set. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been helpful. Do check out the companies. I'll list them in the description box below. And I'll see you in my next video. Tally bye!